looking all around here, and now we get to sit and relax in the gazebo. You have weddings here. Yes, we do. This gazebo and our grounds, we just love to have events here. It's a beautiful setting, and we love to showcase our grounds. We will have private parties, weddings, quinceañeras, all of the above. It's part of our entire compound. There's so many interesting things to see. The agriculture part is fascinating. Yes, part of the Smiley Tyler House, we have a room dedicated to the agriculture and the water of the Coachella Valley. Agriculture, of course, is very important, but water, of course, we couldn't do anything without it. So it talks about how we preserve our water and how important it is and all the different uh, systems that we have in place. And the Coachella Valley Water District has a system put together that you can touch a button and it'll tell you a lot about the water. The kids just adore that. Court rulings and fragile ecosystems contribute toward making some water sources less available. Population and of course the railroad. There wouldn't possibly be an Indio or a built-up Coachella Valley if this hadn't been the place where the railroad was the center between L.A. and Yuma, I think. Correct. In uh, 1877, the Southern Pacific Railroad came out and started to work on doing that. Um, Albert Tingman is considered the father of Indio because he actually was part of the construction boss for the railroad company. And without him, you know, Indio and the station wouldn't be here. The original station, which was out on Indio Boulevard, uh, burned down in 1966. We were able to salvage some of the uh, pieces of equipment and furniture from there. So we have some original pieces here that we, we love to showcase and show people what it used to be like to manage a train. And what about this great kitchen? Oh my, I love the kitchen. Yeah, the kitchen is probably my favorite room in the entire museum. It's a 1926 kitchen. We have original tile. It shows you how people would have lived back then and what a kitchen would have looked like back then, which is very different than what we're used to today. But it is definitely one of my favorite rooms. We even have an old-fashioned icebox and stove. And some kind of a butter, butter churner. Yes, we have a butter churner. We have some really neat um, old... Um, toasters that I really like to show people. And we talk about how ice was delivered to the Coachella Valley. And the original ice company was the Coachella Valley Ice Company, which is still in existence today. And what do they do today? They still deliver ice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you just don't go to the market and pick it up. <laughs> Actually, they do more commercial ice deliveries, I think, than they do um, to private residences. But back then, you got your ice from the ice man like you got your milk from the milkman. Well, you know, we looking at the past, and yet there's a great deal that has to do with the future that happens here at, at the museum. And that, of course, is the schoolhouse. Correct. We just love our 1909 schoolhouse. It has been restored. So people come in and they just say, oh my God, this is so interesting. We have old desks. We actually have chalkboards, which you don't see anymore. And we talk about what schools used to be like here. Um, it used to be a one-room schoolhouse. So the kids would go from kindergarten through 12th grade all in one room. Um, we currently do a lot of children's programs here because we, of course, believe children are the key to the future. We have a young at art program that we um, put up in the summers. It's a summer program, and they teach kids everything from clay work to drawing to painting, and it is probably one of the funnest programs that we do. One of our newer programs we've probably had for a couple of years was started by Dr. Priscilla Porter, and she wrote um, all of it from scratch, and her idea was to teach kids about local history, not just the history of the state or the county or the country. So part of it, the kids come in and they do a living history. They actually become one of the pioneers. They dress the part, they can talk about it. It is probably one of our best uh, programs that we have out. It's always in March, so if anybody can come out, it's, it's a great way to watch the kids and see how much they learn. Okay, now, talking about the future, I know that there's going to be some kind of a promenade connecting the buildings. Definitely. Right down part of our compound, we have two sides. And um, what used to be a street is now uh, what we call the promenade. We have a huge design in final approval stages at the city to create a homage to all of the different agricultural uh, industries that are out here. So it would talk about the grapes and the bell peppers and, of course, water. It's all designed out. It's going to be absolutely gorgeous when we get done. And we are really looking forward to beginning a campaign for that project to take place. I just want to tell everybody I really enjoyed you know, having this visit with you here and sharing our museum, and I hope everyone will come out and take a look. They would be pleasantly surprised at how much energy there is behind the wall, and we really look forward to seeing everyone here. You know, we've heard about the what's happening with the future here at the museum, and the young people who come and see the old schoolhouse and all the programs for the very young to learn about the past to make way for a very wonderful future. And of course, we know that the Dr. Carrion Foundation scholarships also are creating people who are enhancing our future. And so I want to thank everybody here for being with us. And thank you for being with us. We know that we're in very good hands behind 
as I said in the beginning, behind the walls that lead into this museum here in Indio. Thank you for being with us, and we'll see you next time. Palm Springs is proud to support public television. Learn more about our paintings, photography, and sculpture at michaelhlordgallery.com or at our North Palm Canyon location. Michael H. Lord Gallery, an oasis of contemporary art since 1978. Thanks also to Palm Springs Life for 50 years, California's prestige magazine. The Palm Springs Air Museum a nonprofit educational institution whose mission is to exhibit, educate, and eternalize combat aircraft and our veterans. In addition to flying aircraft, artwork, and library sources, perpetuate American history for future generations. The Camelot Theaters, bringing you retrospective documentary and art films, foreign and award-winning motion pictures. Dr. Betty Baxter, certified life coach and consultant. Cash Baxter. The Betty M. Barker Trust, SERP and John Conti Foundation, the Stephen Philibosian Foundation, supporting the arts and the Virginia Waring International Piano Competition, Dorothy and Harold Meyerman, supporting the arts and the Palm Springs Art Museum.